She lived it up with the Lonely Island, fell in love with Deadpool, and once annoyed the heck out of Harrison Ford. Here's why Blake Lively is far more than Gossip Girl. Controversially referred to as Nepo Babies, celebs with famous family members have often been criticized for refusing to acknowledge the extreme privileges they've received as a result. Blake Lively is among the A-listers who benefited from this privilege, though she's avoided much scrutiny over it in the public eye. In fact, many members of the Lively family have worked in the industry, including her father, Ernie, an actor and director. Lively's brother, Eric, has also appeared in a number of movies. In an ironic twist of fate, Blake might be the only member of her family who was hesitant to pursue a career in entertainment. She made her acting debut at the age of 11 in her father's movie Sandman, though she was more interested in completing her higher education at the time. It was Eric who really pushed Blake into an acting career a few years later, convincing his agents to start sending her to auditions. As Lively later told W Magazine, "...it was really hard to say no because I didn't want to make my brother upset." Eric's insistence paid off, however, as it didn't take long for one of those auditions to land Blake her first major role. Within a few months of Blake Lively's first auditions, she landed a major role in the 2005 adaptation of The Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. Lively played Bridget, one of the four leads, alongside Amber Tamblyn, America Ferreira, and Alexis Bledel. The film centers on a quartet of high school friends spending their first summer apart while sharing a magical pair of jeans. It has since become an iconic film of the mid-2000s, labeled the quintessential chick flick by the Michigan Daily. Lively filmed the movie between her junior and senior year of high school. Despite coming at an awkward time, the experience was the push she needed to realize that her brother may have been right about acting. She began working nonstop after graduating from high school, later telling W Magazine, "...I've been learning as I'm going along. It has been just the most amazing experience anybody could ever ask for." Lively said she felt a little older and wiser by the time she reprised her role as Bridget in 2008's sequel, The Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants 2. Notably, the year before that film premiered, Lively had made her debut as the character that forever changed her career trajectory. For devotees of Blake Lively's iconic portrayal of Serena on Gossip Girl, it can be difficult to imagine her as anything but the it girl of Manhattan. Blake, what do you want me to do? Self-flagellate? Wear a hair shirt? If you're referring to the hideous fur vest you wore yesterday, I'm the only one that suffered because I had to look at it. Can you pass the assault, please? Serena's stylish looks and bad girl reputation certainly rubbed off on Lively's public persona, whether she liked it or not. However, it's far from the reality of how Lively actually spent her adolescence, having felt the negative side of teenage introversion. In an interview with Elle Australia, Lively shared how she struggled to adapt to social situations amongst her peers, saying, "...I didn't fit in that well in high school because I was tall and shy and not very confident about myself." That only began to change when she was 16 and began taking classes for her acting, which she says helped her embrace being more extroverted, even before she had fully embraced the profession. Nowadays, Lively oozes as much confidence as her Gossip Girl character, and she has even been willing to share glimpses of her pre-celebrity self via social media. It's hard to imagine Gossip Girl moving forward without Blake Lively in its lead role, though it was certainly a possibility early in the show's production. Lively was scouted for the role of Serena by creators Josh Schwartz and Stephanie Savage, who had been inspired by fan castings of the book series. Rather than auditioning, Lively was approached directly with an offer, which she initially turned down. In a retrospective article published by Vanity Fair, Lively revealed that prior to starring in Gossip Girl, she'd come to feel disillusioned with the entertainment industry. When she told the creators she instead wanted to attend Columbia University, they counteroffered by suggesting she could go one day a week. It was only after Lively had taken the part that those plans fell through, with the actor recalling, "...this is advice to anyone. When they say, we promise, but we can't put it in writing, there's a reason they can't put it in writing." As it turns out, starring in one of the most popular television shows of its time was a little too chaotic for Lively to find any time to pursue higher education. That wasn't even her only gripe about joining the show, either. She knew full well that the show's success would be overwhelming, saying, "...I'm actually a very shy person, and the idea of losing my anonymity was one that was scary to me. You could tell it was a cultural phenomenon." Blake Lively was soon granted new opportunities thanks to her rapid rise to stardom. Among those was her first time hosting Saturday Night Live during the show's 35th season in 2009. Her episode was a standout of the season, but surprisingly, it wasn't her first SNL appearance, nor was it her last. 
Talk about a case of the Mondays. <laughs> a season prior, Lively showed up in an SNL digital short opposite James Franco as a woman seduced by his small genitalia. More notably, Lively made a cameo a year after her hosting stint in the Lonely Island's viral music video, I Just Had Sex, in which she plays a woman dissatisfied with Andy Samberg's underwhelming performance in the bedroom. It's an underappreciated appearance from Lively and one of the comedy group's most famous songs, though it wasn't exactly difficult to get her on board. Samberg told GQ he was especially pleased they were able to rope Lively, as well as fellow A-lister Jessica Alba, into their absurdly stupid song about sex. He said, I can't believe they were in it. They're so awesome for doing that. Not much good came from the 2011 Green Lantern film, but it was, at least, the impetus for Ryan Reynolds and Blake Lively's eventual marriage. While the pair didn't pursue a romance on set, they remained friends until a double date with different partners saw sparks fly. On the Smartless podcast, Reynolds revealed that the romance moved quickly. A, a week later, I was like, we should buy a house together. And like, wow. <laughs> you should, you should. I know, and we did. It was less than a year before the two got married, and by 2024, they'd had four children together. Nowadays, Lively and Reynolds are one of the most beloved celebrity couples in Hollywood. Lively attests that their relationship works thanks to a rule that was established early on. As she explained on Amber Tamblyn's Substack show, Further Ado, she said, "...when Ryan and I got together, we made a rule not to work at the same time, so that we could always prioritize our personal life. As a result, the couple are rarely separated, often supporting one another at premieres and other industry events." One of Blake Lively's biggest theatrical successes was The Shallows, a horror movie that grossed nearly $120 million at the box office. The Shallows features Lively as a stranded surfer who encounters a great white shark. Lively was singled out in a review for RogerEbert.com, which called the film a one-woman show that puts Lively on a jagged, rocky pedestal and worships her. It's a good thing the film accrued positive reviews, too, because it was quite the roller coaster for Lively to perform. In preparation for the role, Lively spent time actually diving with great white sharks to observe them, which helped her overcome her fear of them. She also got in contact with Tom Hanks for advice, inspired by his work in Castaway. However, the production literally left a mark on the actor, as she admitted to News.com, "...I cracked my nose on a buoy, so the bloody nose that's in the movie is actually a real thing that happened to me." While Lively performed most of her own stunts and surfing in the shallows, reshoots took place while she was pregnant with her second child, so a double filled in for the more difficult stunts. Blake Lively has had the honor of working with some truly great actors throughout her career, but perhaps none elicited more anxiety than Harrison Ford. The two worked together in 2015's The Age of Adeline, in which Lively stars as a woman incapable of aging who falls for a modern-day philanthropist. Ford played the philanthropist's father in the movie, and while many actors would be rightfully intimidated meeting an icon like Ford, Lively didn't feel that way, at first. On The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, Lively admitted that she had never seen any Star Wars or Indiana Jones movies prior to meeting Ford. However, Ryan Reynolds sat her down for an Indiana Jones marathon the night before the first day of production, which ended up putting both Lively and Ford into an awkward situation. And I went to talk to him about it, and I was like, that scene when you were supposed to be in a sword fight, and then you pulled out the gun, and you were like... And he just, like, stared at me. Yeah. Lively also told Fallon that, as a result, she may have permanently damaged their potential friendship. He must just think I'm, like, I have some sort of major disorder. <laughs> Still, Ford has since given many compliments towards Lively for her skill as a scene partner, so he must not have taken it too personally. Blake Lively has done her fair share of risque projects, from the saucy sex of Gossip Girl to films such as Savages and The Town, but she long held a steadfast rule about doing nudity, telling Vanity Fair that she finds it distracting. She has also been vocal about how uncomfortable sex scenes made her feel in the past, due to the presence of crew members or the intense intimacy required of actors in even brief scenes. However, Lively's rule was ultimately put to the test when she was approached for Mark Forster's 2016 drama All I See Is You. In the film, Lively plays Gina, a blind woman who rediscovers her sight via surgery to the detriment of her relationship with her husband. Gina rediscovering her sexuality is an important part of the story, and Forster did not want to shoot the film without the script's nude scenes. While Lively initially read the script to see if she'd be interested enough to try convincing the director to take out the nudity, she ended up loving it and agreed to be a part of the film as originally envisioned.
It's well known at this point that Taylor Swift is counted among Blake Lively and Ryan Reynolds' more public celebrity pals, with their friendship stemming from a serendipitous trip to Australia in 2015. Since then, Lively and Swift are frequently spotted attending each other's public events, from stadium concerts to movie premieres, but Lively and her family have seeped into the Taylor Swift universe in ways even hardcore Swifties may not know. Most notably, Blake Lively made her directorial debut with a music video for I Bet You Think About Me, a vault track from Swift's re-recording of her 2012 album, Red. The duo collaborated on the music video's script and employed Miles Teller to play the part of Swift's ex, whose wedding to another woman is haunted by the sudden appearance of the singer. The project seems to have opened up doors for Lively, too, who is set to make her feature-length directorial debut with an adaptation of the graphic novel Seconds. The I Bet You Think About Me video is far from the only time Lively has become a part of Swift's world, however. Her daughter James's voice appears at the beginning of the song Gorgeous, and her first three children inspired the names of characters on Swift's 2020 album Folklore. If that wasn't enough, Lively and Reynolds also donated their home to be used for the filming of Swift's own All Too Well, the short film.